good morning. It's, uh, I always love Fair Week um, because I didn't grow up in Greenville. I grew up uh, just a couple cities over, and um, it still blows my mind, the culture of the fair. And I, I, I always <laughs> I'm trying, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to really try to be polite today and, and not <laughs> regret what I say. But it's just weird. <laughs> it's just weird. People become weird at the fair. Um, I thought Walmart was bad. But the fair is just weird. But, man, it's just so raw. It's, it's where you, people are just themselves. Um, and even the church today, uh, we, we have several seats empty. But we have a pretty good number. Uh, I want you to turn around and look, look around right now. Who's here? Um, <laughs> that's right, Mike. That's right. Amen. Uh, we're probably pushing, pushing one, 160, 170 today. And numbers, it's not about the numbers, but facts are your friends. I, I just want to say facts are your friends. Um, I, I had several people come to me this morning and say, oh, it's going to be a low attendance. It's fair. And I, I get that's probably the case. But I... I then asked them, well, who, are, who did you invite today? I'm serious. Who, who did you invite to church today? Oh, it was busy, busy week. I, I didn't have a lot of time. 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Um, and it's, it's just really interesting to me. It's quick to say, well, well church is going to be down today um, or... Or there's a lot of empty seats or, or this or that. But in reality, if, if, you're, if you're God's people are moved by God's spirit, that's, that's not a saying or a slogan or a pitch. That's reality. If you follow the Lord, you're viral. You're on fire to serve God. And I think this is why we're called as Radiant Lighthouse to be in Dark County because we love God, follow Jesus, and illuminate darkness. And we truly are a hospital for sinners right here. This is not a museum full of saints. I met someone at the fair yesterday, and they're from out of town, and they said, oh, we visited several churches, and, and we just don't have the fellowship. There's just not the Sunday schools. And, and all, all this person was doing is, is trying to recreate what she or he had experienced in their previous life. And I said, we're not the church for you. We're not. And some of you sitting here today, we may not be the church for you because we want to teach you how to be the church. And when you learn how to be the church, you invite friends. You bring people with you. you. You shout and you cheer and you celebrate the wins in your life because you serve a God who lives alongside of you and you, they, he does life with you. It's not a God that just shows up on Sunday. It's not a God that just shows up when you're in the hospital. It's not a God that just shows up when you're mad or depressed or you feel a l least of these. It's a God that is the same God yesterday, the same God today, and the same God tomorrow. And when you realize that, when you truly understand that, you become viral. But this, this is what I notice, and maybe it's just me, maybe I'm weird. But I notice in the North American church, and I'm going to get narrowed down just to Dark County, the majority of people who claim to follow Jesus, Christians, they look dead to me. I'm serious. They look like they're just going through the motions. And before you know it, their focus is on songs or worship or attendance or carpet or colors or times of services or, or this and that. When at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when have you shared about Jesus to someone else? So <laughs> today, maybe it's my lack of sleep. But if you come to me today and you have a complaint or a concern, you better tell me who you brought to church today. Because we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. You know what I'm saying? If you come to me today and you say, hey, I can't sign up for the fair because the online thing's not working, well, get in your car, drive to gate one, and see if they need help. Hello. If you're telling me that you can't be part of what's going on because you don't feel like you're able to count change back or you feel like you're not able to be a part of the group, just go and pray with somebody and be part of the group. Uh, Jamie can tell you, everyone that can tell you that has been there, there is a job for everyone. And we'd love for you to be there no matter how young or old you are. Because at the end of the day, it's not about filling the spot. It's about you missing out on the opportunity to experience God at the fair in the community. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting how our focus can change. But what I really want to share is, is, is we're in this series called Viral, 
And so I think if we're talking about God's people are moved by God's spirit, then we better understand what it's like to have a spirit of God inside of us. And I think a lot of us think we understand it, but we don't show it. And if you don't show it, I wonder if you truly understand it or even have it inside of you. And so I want to encourage you today that, that God wants to just give you that spirit of, of, of abundant life and wants to give you that spirit that just shares what's going on in your life, the good and the bad, because he's there with you. Does that make sense? And so here at Radiant Lighthouse, it may be, look a little different. You, there may be some pastors you've never heard of, like, hey, this isn't the church for you. But I want to be completely transparent for you that we want to teach you how to be the church. And it's, it's scriptural. God wants you to be the church. He doesn't want you to do church. And so we're excited for that because there's a lot of people and, and things happening uh, on this campus. And I would say there's over 100 people that attend this church on a regular basis at the fair right now. And they're just, they're doing some amazing stuff. And we'll have pictures next week to show. But thanks for everybody who is showing up and continues to show up. Uh, we've seen some really cool stuff at Gate 1 and had amazing opportunities to, to do some cool stuff. Um, in the community. If you know me at all, you know, uh, you know I like Mustangs. I like fast cars. That's kind of my thing. I really like that stuff. And at gate one, a lot of cars will pull in. And you're supposed to go slow when you do that. And there's sometimes people get upset and they want to want to go somewhere else and they can't go where they need to go in our gate. So they got to turn around. And it's, it's notorious. Every time they turn around and they get right back on the road, as soon as they get close to Eikenberry, they just stomp on them. And they speed off, right? because they're frustrated and they want to get where they want to get. But it spoke to me this week how wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be interesting if we as Christians, followers of Jesus, if our lives would imitate kind of a vehicle or a car when the accelerator is wide open, like slammed to the floor. How many of you, okay, just show of hands. How many of you have ever done that before? Slam the accelerator all the way to the floor. Come on. How many of you have done it? All the men in here. No, there's some women in here too. Come on. Slam it on the floor. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you know what I'm talking about. So there, there's, there's what's called RPMs in your engine, right? And when more power. And when you're driving, sometimes you have to pass somebody or you have to, get, uh, you have to ex accelerate, right? And so sometimes you have to give it more gas. And so you have to put the pedal down. Well, sometimes you have to open it up and live wide open. What would it look like if you took yourself off of cruise control and began to live and live a life pedal to the metal, serving with all your heart? It would be kind of living wide open. Think about it. Turn with me um, to the book of Acts, Acts 13, 32 is where we're going to kind of start out. But I want to hone in on verse 36. Acts 13, beginning in verse 32, it says this. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus. As also it is written in the second psalm. You are my son, today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way, he will give you the holy and sure blessing of David. Therefore, he says also in another psalm, you will not let your holy one see corruption. Acts 13, 36, where I want to really narrow today, says this, for David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up did not see corruption. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Pray with me. Father God, I just pray right now in the next couple minutes you speak to us from your word. You speak to us and allow us to be encouraged today. To allow us to be encouraged because you want to use us just with the flaws and with the... Uh, just all of our hearts that we have here today. But you want more for us, Father. And so I pray you speak to that in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So recently I'm sharing uh, our church story with a couple leaders from another local church in the community. And they ask, you know, how did you raise your money? How did you raise money when you plant a church from nothing? 
And if, if you know, uh, we're only a little over three years old. We'll be four years old on January 19th of 2020 as a church. And when God called me into ministry, I worked alongside uh, different positions in the church. And then God called me to plant a church just like he did Pastor Fee 40 years ago. But when Pastor Fee and I were called to plant a church, it's not just an idea you come up with in the middle of the night and you just do it the next day. It takes time. You have to raise support. you got to raise funds. you got to have a plan. you got to kind of know what, what God is calling you to. And so it takes a lot of faith and a lot of effort. And I remember there was a time where I, I quit my full-time job, went full-time into ministry, had no job the next day. But I knew we were supposed to plant a church, my wife and I. And we went through an assessment and we did all these things. And, and a lot of leaders will ask me this day, well, how did you survive? How, how, did that, how did you provide financially? Well, first off, there was no plan B. There was no, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go back into law enforcement. If this doesn't work, I'm going to go back to school. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. No, there was, it's going to work because God called me to it and he's going to provide. And, and, right? And so, so we, that was the first step. But then the next step was I was willing to do whatever it took to provide for my family. Whether that was working at McDonald's or Lowe's or Stanley Steamer or working um, in a factory on third shift or swing shift. No matter what it took, I was going to provide for my family. But my focus was the plant church. And so people all the time, especially pastors, will ask, well, how did you do that? And I said, well, it's different. It wasn't a denomination that we planted with and had a support by a big church and was sent out. It, it wasn't any of that. It was truly a faith step experience where you step out in faith and God provided every step of the way. And so another pastor was asked, how do you have the gall to ask people who are already busy at work or in home to get involved as volunteers in your church? Does that make you feel guilty when you have to ask for money or feel guilty when you have to ask for time? If you notice today when you walk in, there's, there's quite a mess going on next door, right? There's a bunch of dirt moved and a bunch of things happening. And a lot of times people are like, man, that building project is so exciting. We cannot wait for it to be finished. And I said, well, great. Then you can start giving towards it. Well, well, I'm not sure I'm ready to do that. Well, then I'm not sure you're ready to be on this campus. Because this is a movement happening up here. And a movement is with the people, not for the people. You see, we're not building a building just for people. We're building a building so the movement that's happening up here, our kids can walk next door and not have to be in the elements outside. The uh, Chamber of Commerce and the police and fire and all the people in the community that meet up here on a regular basis will have an entry point that knows this is the main entrance. And then they'll see all the different things that are happening in the lobby and, and be a part of. And we're able to do community in, inside this building. It's more than just about <laughs> connecting the two buildings. It's about finishing what God has given this young man's heart over 40 years ago, saying this is what we've called you, Herschel and Barb, to do, and we want you to do it, and it's now time to complete it. You see, that's part of the movement that you are a part of when you give towards the building project. Interesting. It's interesting. Think about it. I really want you to think about it. Don't just clap about it, but think about the legacy you're a part of. When you just give $25 a week to something like that. Think about it. I've dumped personally over $25 in strawberry lemonades this week. Personally. And that's not including my rotary lemonade, which is the cheapest on the fair for $4. And it's over by the youth building. Go check them out. But <laughs> I've dumped $25 in strawberry lemonades. And I just wonder what kind of legacy that's leaving. But when I think about the $25 into our building, what kind of legacy that's leaving. For 40 years from now. But here's the reality, church. The reality is the majority of you are not on board. The majority of you are not giving towards it. And I'm not here to, 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 to bash you or to, or, or to guilt you. I'm just telling you as your lead pastor, if you're not giving towards this movement, you're missing out on an opportunity. You really are in a lot of ways. Not because we can't complete it without you, because God is going to complete it without you. But he wants to complete it with you. And so I want to encourage you. Pastor V is going to come up next week to, to wrap up our faith promise giving cards. And, and maybe some of you are, are ready to do that. But we want you to, to really be part of this uh, opportunity. But I think it's interesting when the pastors ask, how do you ask people to do that? Wes, do you know kids are getting ready to go back to school and there's parents that can't afford back to school uh, supplies and clothes? I do know that. I have three kids of my own. But then I look at the pastors and, and leaders that ask, 
why are we doing it at this time? And I said, because God said so. God has opened the doors for us to do it now, not in the fall. God has opened the doors for us to do it now, not when you're ready. God has opened the doors for us to do it now, not when the building inspector or the people are say it's time. But God has opened the doors now because he said, now is the time we want you to build. And if, if you're not behind that, then you don't believe your pastor. And that's a problem. <laughs> and so I would love to have a conversation with you with that. But at the end of the day, we know God is in it. And we want you to be a part of this amazing opportunity. And so the reason I get involved in ministry is really in this verse we see in the text. The reason I got involved in ministry was to be part of changing the world. How many of you truly believe you can change the world? Honestly. You can. I believe that. I believe you think you can do that. Because you can do that. I believe Christy Boer is the only one in this room who truly believes she can change the world right now. Oh, I got you. I got you. I'm sorry. You were up. Two of you. Three of you. Now we're talking. How many believe you can change the world? Be honest. Three of you? Maybe. I believe, Mike, you can change the world. I believe you have changed the world. I believe each and every one of you here today can change the world. I really do. And you're thinking, man, Wes, you're going crazy. No, I'm not going crazy. God has created you fearfully and wonderfully. God has created you for a purpose. And you need to know today, no matter the garbage in your life, no matter where you've come from, no matter what you dealt with this morning, you can change the world. You need to know that, church, because if you don't understand it, if you, if you don't truly receive it, then you're not going to change the world, and you're missing out on an opportunity. And today, maybe I should have titled this, this message, Don't Miss Out, but don't miss out on what God has for you today, because you are world changers you just have to put actions into words. And you just have to do what God has called you to do. Last week we talked about intercessory prayer. And we talked about how important that was. Today, church, besides the three or four that was bold enough to really raise your hand, I want you to challenge yourself this week to pray how you can be a world changer. Not when you graduate or get a degree or do these things society says you have to. I'm talking Monday. I'm talking tomorrow. I'm talking right now. How can you be a world changer? Because God will reveal that to you. That's the reason why I got into ministry was to change the world. And when I ask people to help, I'm asking them to change the world with me. When I'm asking to give $25 a week, when I'm asking them to show up at a gate and work for five hours, when I'm asking you to come to the rotary trailer and shake lemonades for four hours, when we're asking you to do things, it's not to just fill a spot. It's to become world changers. And it sounds crazy in your mind because you're like, eh, how can we be a world changer in Dark County? Well, I'm telling you, it becomes a viral experience for people when God's people are moved by God's spirit. You know how ironic it was to park the camper at the fair this past year? So there's a spot that we park a camper, um, and we, we were parking it. And it was last week that we were starting to do that. And people were already sitting their chairs up, sitting under their camper, just waiting to see it. Like they were so excited to see what was happening at the fair. Wouldn't it be something if you all set chairs up outside this door waiting for a Sunday morning at 10 a.m.? Think about it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if this lawn, and I believe this could happen, this lawn was filled with chairs marking their spot because they knew come Sunday at 10 o'clock, God was going to be preached about, was going to be experienced, and you were going to witness an amazing King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right? But the reality is, none of you clapping have ever put a chair out front because you don't need to. You can walk in, you can pick your chair, you, you can see where to sit, there's empty chairs. But I just wonder if we truly understood that mentality and, and lived with this viral all in, like accelerator to the floor, how many people would be dragging their chairs behind you? You know, it's interesting, the campers, when you put the camper at the fair, the reason you have that spot is usually because you've been in line for a while, right? It's usually a process. And sometimes they used to even inherit those. And, and people would inherit and give it. But what I've noticed with the chairs, people that put their chair 
they bring their friends and they bring their chairs. Matter of fact, I've noticed a new thing. People are putting trash bags and, and like, like uh, cupboards over their chairs so they don't get wet. And that's like a newer thing I've been noticing. And it's starting to become viral. Like if you notice, there's trash bags and there's different coverings over the chairs. It's no more just our chair's going to sit at the chair, but we're going to protect it. We're going to protect it. And we're not worried about it getting stolen. We're, prote we're protecting it from the weather, like the rain and the storm. And we want to protect that chair because it's so important to them. I'm going to get back on track. Think about the text today. Think about it. Go back with me. Go back with me in verse 36. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. He fell asleep. He was serving in his own generation. He was serving and doing everything he could. I think you need to know today, no matter how young or old you are, your generation wasn't a baby boomer. It wasn't a Gen X or Gen Z. It wasn't millennials. It's now. Your generation is now. If they're breathing, it's your generation. And I know you could go off on this and say, well, I was born in this day. I don't care when you're born. You're breathing today. And if you have breath today, there's a generation that needs you to be involved today. And I believe you need to become a history maker, a world changer. If you ask most lifetime church volunteers why they do what they do, they'll probably, you'll probably start hearing about a, a point in their life where they started serving. It's interesting. When you start serving, that kind of seals the deal for living on mission for the Lord. Here, here's is what one volunteer said. I felt that God of heaven, the King of kings and the Lord of lords and, and the God of heaven and earth, he used me at that moment. To make an impact on somebody. And I discovered that there's nothing in the world like it. It became this opportunity where I truly felt like I was part of God's hands and feet. And I truly felt like I was part of something greater than just what my pastor talks about or church talks about. And it beats anything else I've ever experienced in my entire life. If we look at Acts 13, 36, for David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. You see, David served the purposes of God in his generation. Are you serving the purposes of God for your generation today? Because I think there's a difference from participating and being a spectator. We have to keep raising the bar. Write this down if you're taking notes today. I don't have them on the slides today. We're going to keep it kind of simple. But write this down. Radiant Lighthouse is a place to feel comfortable hearing the word. Okay? You should feel comfortable today knowing you're going to hear God's word be preached. That's a guarantee. We're always going to preach from the word of God. But it should make you uncomfortable if you are not responding to it. I'm going to say it again. Radiant Lighthouse is a place where you should feel comfortable because you know God's word is going to be preached. But listen, you should feel uncomfortable. You should be sitting on the edge of your seat. You should be sitting on go ready to stomp the accelerator if you are not responding to it. You see, we love to serve and care for others because that is normal behavior for people who are filled with God's spirit. We are Christians, and Christ was the ultimate servant, and we can't help but serve because the spirit of the servant has filled our hearts. And when we serve, we're just being who we naturally are and created. Philippians 2, 5 through 11, if you read that, those scriptures, it speaks of the unity of the church that comes through humility. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. You see, being a servant doesn't sound very appealing at times. But there are benefits. I want to I share this study because I like to do a lot of research and study on, on some of these things. 2002, there was a study of elderly. And this is 65 and older, so take it with what you want worth. But elderly uncovered that volunteering may be more important than one minute of physical exercise when it comes to living longer. 2002 study said that the majority of elderly discovered that volunteering may be more important than even one minute of physical exercise when it comes to living longer. You want to know why? Because they felt a part of something bigger than who just they are. It wasn't about doing as many reps in a 
in, in a machine. It wasn't about running or walking or exercising for so many time or, or the longest time. It wasn't about how many shirts you could sweat through. Those are all good things for health. But what this study has found is just volunteering allows your mind to feel like you're a part of something bigger than you. You're a part of something that God is in. You are a part of a movement. And that provides a longer life because there's a thing called a helper's high. And a helper's high is described as kind of an emotional well-being of volunteering. There's a university called Emory. Emory University scientists have discovered a scientific reason for the helper's high. Choosing to uh, cooperate with others activated an area of the brain which is like this rich in dopamine. And the chemical that produces this pleasurable sensation activated by certain drugs and other addictive behaviors. Now listen, I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever been accused of helping someone get high on serving the Lord, but I guess that wouldn't be a bad thing, would it? Probably not. 1 Corinthians 16, 15 says, we read of a family where this type of addiction is taking place. To an addict, oneself means to arrange in an orderly manner. A drug addict arranges his life around drugs. Follow me here. An alcoholic arranges their life around alcohol. Why would a servant of Christ not arrange their lives around serving Christ? Think about it. Are you an addict today? Specifically, are you an addict for Jesus? Are you addicted to Jesus today? Because a servant of Christ surrounds yourself with serving Christ. I want to highlight some ministries and opportunities here at Radiant Lighthouse where you can be part of serving Christ. We have an app where you can go to. And it's a free app. Um, and you can go on there and you can, you can see the events coming up and you can see different things. Sometimes it glitches. Sometimes it has issues. But there's always contacts there. And we have a children's ministry that's just blowing up like crazy. We have a lot of children. You can serve in our children's ministry. We have a youth ministry that is doing some amazing things and is blowing up in, in certain areas there that you can be a part of. We have a worship team that you can be a part of. We, we, have, a, um, we have a plethora of different ways you can, you can volunteer. We have a cleaning ministry. We have a, 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 a lawn ministry where there's 35 acres on this campus that we need help with that uh, God can use you and your gifts and talents. I don't want just your money and your equipment. I want your, I want like your, your hands to, to help us do things. We have uh, all kinds of areas of ministry that you can be part of. We have a creative arts team that creates these amazing backgrounds and, and, and does some cool stuff with that. We have a committee coming up with a Christmas dinner that we're doing crazy cool stuff with. Um, and we have uh, other um, like organizations that you can be a part of. We um, have a, a tech and media team back there that we're trying to fill with more volunteers and sound engineers that we're trying to get more people plugged in. We have a safety and security team. Whether uh, your safety is security qualified or background, we, we provide training and, and we do a lot of cool stuff like that. We have um, just a plethora of things that you can jump into. We have a prayer team that prays every Sunday, Sunday morning. And uh, all these things are opportunities where you can serve along other life-giving people, but ultimately realize that you're doing more than just yourself. You're doing what God has called you to do, and you're doing good things that are allowing God to be exemplified. Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says this, let us not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I'm going to say that again because I see in some of your eyes today where you've given up. I'm just going to be 100% transparent. Maybe you're tired from the fair. Maybe you've had a long week. But I see in your eyes where some of you are just ready to give up. And it's not time for you to give up. Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says, let us not be weary in doing good. I don't care if you spent 16 hours at the fair. Don't be weary because you're doing good. You're being a light in dark county. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Church, don't give up. Don't give up because you're frustrated or upset with something going on in the organization. Don't give up because I have made you frustrated or upset. I'm human. 
Don't give up because God wants to use you. He wants to use you just like you are, and he wants you to be part of this movement. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good. And check it out. It says to all people. To all people. Not just the ones that we like. Not just the ones we feel sorry for. But to all people. Stand with me. Candy, I'm going to throw this at you. There's the um, pads that you played at offering. Can you just play that real quick? Just so we have a little bit of music for you to just listen to what God has called you to do today. Today's going to be a little shorter than normal. And it's a little unscripted. I don't have all the observations, but I do have an application for you today. Here's the deal. What I am going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to challenge yourself right now. Bow your heads and you close your eyes right where you're at. Whether you're male or female here today, whether you have your driver's license or you don't, you can visualize a car. And I want you to be in that driver's seat right now. I want you to buckle up and I want you to put both hands on that steering wheel. Think about it. It's just you in that car. No one else, no spouse, no kids, no coworkers, no siblings, no friends. It's just you. And you're at a stoplight and it's red. And when that stoplight turns green, you have all authority. There's no laws. There's no rules. There's no one looking around. It's just you. And you can put the accelerator all the way down, pedal to the metal. And your application today is to do it. Floor it. I don't care if you're in first gear or 10th gear, but put the pedal to the metal because the reality is Jesus is in the passenger seat and he's saying, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And if you claim to follow Jesus, then you will grin and smile and put that pedal to the metal because you know he's calling you to live a life that is all in and sold out. It may sound silly to you today, but I think a lot of you need the encouragement that it's okay to live life to its fullest. You're not promised tomorrow. But God's word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And there are times you do need to slow down and listen for the warnings and, and hear his call. But there are times where you just have to move. Take it out of park and put it in the drive. And that's your application today, church. If you're here today and, and you've never given your life to the Lord, all you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. But it doesn't stop there. That's just the beginning. It's the beginning of a new creation where the old things are past. And you become a new creation living a life with Jesus. You're not perfect, but you desire him and not of yourselves. Right now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm ready to put it into drive today. Would you just raise your hand and let me pray for you? I'm not going to call you up here. I just want to see the show of hands right now. I'm ready to put it in drive today. Amen. I see those hands. Amen. Yep. You may you can put your hands down. Amen. I see them. There's a lot of hands that went up. If you're here today with your heads bowed and your eyes closed and you're saying, Pastor, I've never driven with Jesus. I've never done this life with Jesus, but I'm ready. I'm not going to call you up front. I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand so I can pray for you. Would you just slip your hand right now and say, I'm ready to live my life with Jesus Christ. Amen. Yep, I see that hand. Amen. Right now, 
I'm ready to live my life with Jesus Christ. Because I want to be a world changer. Yep. I see that again. You can put them down. Father God, you saw our hands today and you know our hearts. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these people that are here today. I love them so much. And I love the people that aren't here, but I know that will be coming. Lord, prepare our hearts for the people that don't know you. Prepare our minds to learn, to get in your word and to grow closer to you. And allow our entire being to follow you and to surrender to you so we can be a follower of your son, Jesus Christ, and live a life that's vibrant and that provides hope and encouragement to a dark world. Lord, we thank you for that, and I give you all the praise and glory today. And everyone said, amen. Hey, I love you guys. Go and give them heaven, and we'll see you next week. Bring a friend next week. <laughs>